This is Captain Cold. I'm the Punisher. And you're, you're watching, watching Comics, Beer, Beer and Sci-Fi. Welcome back everyone to a special Halloween edition of Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. I'm Nick and this is my lovely co-host, Countess Jillian. Thanks, Nick. I'm so excited to be here today. It's my favorite holiday and we're bringing it to you from Greenfield Village. And we have lots of treats and even a few tricks to get to, so why don't we get started? All right, but first we need to thank our sponsors from Northwestern Tech. Thank you and thank all of you for watching. And let's take it over to the queue right now, who's got some scary new TV shows for you to check out. Yeah. <laughs> this is Q, Comics Being Sci-Fi. I ain't got a lot of time. It's horror week, and I got zombies busting through the door, but I'm here to talk about the best horror shows out right now. Walking Dead came on last week. We finally found out who Negan killed, and guess what? It was, not gonna spoil it, because you might not have seen it yet. You have one? Maybe one of these fine people still breathing? Oh, or did I? You got the exorcist. We all know that. Turning head, vomit, get out, demons, watch it, good. I want you to help me. I won't abandon you. Stand against evil. He's going against all kind of evil, witches, zombies. Back on has arrived! Oh, I keep saying zombies. I'm a little worried right now. Paranoid. They're breaking through. Then we're talking about Z Nations, which they're coming through the door now. So check it out. It's coming on another network. You know, not allowed to say that. Is that what I think it is? A bomb zombie? The battle for the future of humanity is about to begin. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. And I intend to win it. Throwback Classic of the Week, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Check that out, because it was on for a few years, seven years to be exact, and if you watch Buffy, you gotta watch Angel. And if you watch Angels, then you can check out Vampire Diaries on the CW. See, I got that in there. Hurry up, let's go! Be careful out there, Q. Now let's check in with Shannon Long of Brew Export, who has a few horror-themed beers for us to try. Hey everybody, I'm Shannon Long here, and I decided that pumpkin beers are way overrated. They don't even win medals at the Great American Beer Festival. So we're checking out scary beers for Halloween. The first one we're trying is Todd the Axeman by Surly Brewing Company. Todd the Axeman is an American IPA that clocks in at 7.2% ABV and brewed in Minnesota. This IPA actually has notes of tartness with medium body and a light hot flavor. And boy, is this can scary. Next up is White Noise from Perrin Brewing Company in collaboration with Cigar City. This Imperial White IPA may not seem scary, but have you ever seen Poltergeist? No, no, not the remake, the 1982 original version. Then you know how scary White Noise can be. At 9.7% and served in bombers, you might see some paranormal activity if you drink too much of this beer. The final one is a personal favorite of mine. This comes from Three Floyds Brewing Company in Indiana. The label depicts a zombie king and was drawn by comic book artist Tim Seeley. Zombie Dust is an American pale ale and slides in at 6.2%. It's a very smooth and almost fruity character from the Citra Hops. This has been Shannon Long with your scary beers. Happy Halloween! Shannon, thanks for those frightfully good suggestions. It's time for our first commercial break, but don't go away because coming up we've got new movies, new comics, and Jill is going to interview makeup expert Dan Phillips. You see over there? That proves my point perfectly. That's what girls are looking for these days. The loud, obnoxious party boy. But over there, that's what women are looking for. The strong, confident guy with a career. 
So what you're saying is girls like $80,000 worth of beer soaked debt and smart women appreciate a hardworking, skilled tradesman? Exactly. Fact, heating and cooling tradesmen are in demand. Go to Northwestern Tech and become an HVAC tradesman in 10 and a half months. Fifth Avenue in Royal Oak is your favorite club destination and holiday party headquarters. Fifth Avenue's private second floor is perfect for banquets, concerts, reunions, or corporate events. Complete with multiple seating arrangements, stage, state-of-the-art audio-visual, pool, catered food and beverage packages with the best service in Metro Detroit. We can create a custom plan to fit your budget. Give your employees and guests the experience they deserve and book your event at Fifth Avenue in Royal Oak. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Hope we haven't scared you too much. As long as there's no scary clowns around, I think we'll be okay. Well, I got a clown for you, but he's not too scary. Brad's up next with What's at the Movies. Well, Halloween has brought us the final stages of a horror, thriller, October month of movie craptum. Yes, I said it, I admit it. Professor Langdon. We need your help. Three days ago, a man killed himself. We think he was part of something much bigger. There was a package in his pocket. And what was it? It's Dante's Inferno. Dante defined our modern conception of hell 700 years ago. This is a dystopic world where sci-fi meets theology and maybe a little philosophy and prophecy and oh, there's definitely mass murder, so <laughs> who knows? But this is Dan Brown's The Inferno. Dan Brown who brought us The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. And of course, he's brought us Tom Hanks. Who doesn't love Tom Hanks? Everybody loves Tom Hanks. For over a thousand years, the nomads of the Altai Mountains have hunted with golden eagles. A precious skill that has traditionally been handed down from father to son. But now a young girl is setting out to become a master eagle hunter. The Eagle Huntress is a 13-year-old Cossack girl who is learning how to be a falconer with a golden eagle. Now, golden eagles, they're like three foot tall, eight to 12 foot wingspan, and are used to hunt down gray wolves. This is awesome! And not only is it awesome, but it's real. This is a documentary, this is true. You watch this girl train these giant raptors. This movie is freaking awesome. And it's real and it's true, and she's a hero, and I don't care what you say, this qualifies. Let me tell you, we have been waiting for this for, well, okay, years. Guardian of the Galaxies 2 is on the board. We've only seen the sneak preview. It's not a full-blown trailer, but it is GOTG in its finest. We have Drax in Star-Lord. We have Rocket and Groot. We have great lines and we have great music. I am a dancer, Gamora is not. You just need to find a woman who is pathetic. Like you. Thanks, buddy. Do you need a hug? No. No, I do not. Oh, I thought I said no. You're welcome. Yeah. Ah, a feeling. I'm high on believing. Ah. I know you've been waiting for this one a long time. Hugh Jackman is back in his role as Wolverine, also known as Logan, the name of the trailer. This is Logan in his old man Logan, guys. If you've read any of the books, you know that all mutantdom is gone, except for maybe Professor X. It turns out there is another mutant, and Professor X is helping Logan find none other than his daughter, who, if you read the books, you find out is the newest Wolverine. I am still right here And you could have it all My empire of dirt I will let you down I will make you hurt I will Find a way. 
We'll see you next time. Thank you, Mr. Levin. We cannot wait to check those out. Now let's go to Jill, who had a chance to chat with FX and makeup expert, Dan Phillips. Hi, this is Jill here with Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. I'm here with Dan Phillips. How you doing, Dan? I'm doing great. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. It's been great. We're doing right now a big, huge um, Game of Thrones uh, White Walker in my photo booth, so it's been just crazy. I mean, the fans are just lined up. It's been awesome. So you've been doing makeup for, what, 15 years, you said? Yeah, about 15 years professionally, and I've done everything from uh, the Hobbit trilogy to really low indie films in Michigan. What got you started? You know, I, was, I always had a love for makeup and, and horror films in general. I was inner city Detroit kid. My dad used to take me to Bel Air driving on 8 Mile, the old theater. And I used to sit there and watch all the old splatter Italian films. My dad would fall asleep and I would watch them and they never freaked me out. You know, I was always wondered how do they do that? You know, how do they make them guys look all crazy like that? So like a lot of guys that do what I do, I went home and would steal my mom's makeup and try to figure it all out, you know? so. Uh, I've just been uh, very fortunate to have gotten some good training and the rest is monster history, I guess. So what was your favorite movie to work on? Uh, Scope-wise, probably the Hobbit trilogy, you know? I mean, I was out in New Zealand for about five months wow. and um, $750 million, huge, epic, gargantuan film. But uh, they, yeah. they all have a love in my heart, you know? For me, it's about the medium of makeup. I've said this in the past, if, and I'm, and I'm ser truly sincere about this. If I'm at The Hobbit doing Hobbit stuff, or I'm, if I'm at the local fair doing kids' face painting, I'm just as happy. I really just love doing makeup and, and getting my hands greasy, and, and that's what I love doing. So that's I'll awesome. be a makeup guy till I'm dead. What was it like working with Dick Smith? Dick was amazing. He he's unfortunately passed away, and uh, you know I just uh, I've been blessed beyond blessed, and uh, the the stuff I've learned from him. And the stories and stuff, are, they'll be in my heart forever. So, so what, um, what's coming up next for Dan Phillips? Wow, I have um, some more Comic-Con stuff coming up in some other arenas, but I also have some big creature suits we're doing at the shop right now. I can't talk to you too much about it, but big, huge monster creature suits. No it's spoilers. Really no spoilers. Besides that, it's dudes in suits, and that's great, and that's what I love. So it's better than uh, a bunch of CGI werewolves running around, so it's all good. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. All right, have a good day. You too, thank Thanks. you. Thanks, bye guys. Jill, great interview as always. Thanks. And if you want to see any of our other interviews or videos, check out our YouTube channel, and be sure to follow Comic Spear and Sci-Fi on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're gonna go to Rob now from GOB Retail, which has Michigan's largest comic book and game selection. All right, I'm here with Casey from Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Uh, we're talking about this week's Comics to Know. Yeah, and when I walked in this store, Rob, I tell you, man, I was here, you know, for three to four hours. I bought probably about 50 to 80 bucks worth of stuff. <laughs> so true. this store is awesome. I love this place. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is Batman Beyond. Uh, Terry McGinnis is back in the bat suit, uh, number one. The Joker may have returned. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. Yeah, I wanna see what the Joker gang does, and mm -hmm. I think this one is where the enemies of Batman, mm -hmm. former folks are targeted by the Jokers, right? Yeah, that's right, and the oh. uh, whole idea is he's gotta come out of retirement. Yeah. So, making, definitely give it a look. Making a statement. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, I've got Teen Titans, number one of the Rebirth series. Um, we've got our classic Titans here, uh, Raven, Beast Boy, Starfire, but a new Robin in the case of Damian Wayne. The psychopath. Yeah, the psychopath. And in this case, the psychopath captures the Teen Titans to uh, become their leader. I think it'll be pretty interesting. I want to see how Damian is in the role of Okay, Robin. did he capture or recruit them? You'll have to read to find out exactly, but I guarantee you capture is a more accurate term. So I think he needed help fighting his grandfather. <laughs> yeah, that's, that seems to be the case. Family issues. Yeah, definitely give it a look. What else you got? Saga. We are on issue 39, one of Image's longer going series. Starts out as a sort of Romeo and Juliet in space. It's kind of fantasy more. It is definitely fantasy. more fantastical um, than sci-fi. Well, I'm anyway. sold already because I love Piano Staples. She's a great comic book artist. Sold already, created the thunders. This week, I wanted to talk about Miss Marvel, number 12, start of a new storyline for her. Miss Marvel is heading to Pakistan to see her family after the events of Civil War. I've liked this Miss Marvel so far, though I believe you'd have commented about it. I didn't really like it much sure. uh, because she's supposed to be a protege of Carol Danvers, but yep. this Miss Marvel has two powers. Yeah. She has the powers of mystique, she can shape shift, yep. and the powers of 
like Mr. Fantastic. That's true. You can stretch and do all that other cool stuff, but I don't think that's a cool Miss Marvel it is. It is It is definitely different. Give it a look and uh, figure out for yourself. Still fun to read. Yep. Rob, we just hit the season premiere of Walking Dead. It's huge. Man. That's true. Everyone's comic talking book about following. It. Yep, mm -hmm. everybody's talking about it. So what do you got? Walking Dead, we have a lot as far as graphic novels, some of the newer issues. You're looking for issue 100 if you want to know how the comic handles the big events of the season premiere. Issue 100 shows who Negan actually killed. So those of you who read issue 100 back in 2012 already knew. Yep. Uh, definitely give it a look, an excellent series, and different enough from the show that it's still full of surprises. If you you pick up the they, comic they change it up, they're smart, mm -hmm. they change it up. So you don't know everything just because you read the comic book. The comic book changes from this TV series all the time. I think for this week, that's it. Come to this store. <laughs> this is The Crow, and you're watching Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's, Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. Hungry Howie's makes it easy. It's just a little mini pizza box, but we make lots of money, lots of dough. Go to DoughRazor.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. You know that Lawrence Technological University ranks fifth among U.S. colleges for boosting graduates' earning power? RSVP now for our Blue and White Tour on November 18th so you can meet students and faculty while exploring our 100 undergraduate, master's, and doctoral programs. At Lawrence Tech, everything is possible, and possible is everything. Welcome back to all the ghouls and ghosts who have stayed up late to watch us. It's time for our favorite video gamer, Sarah, who's going to show us the most nightmare-inducing video games. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Sarah, back again with a lineup of scary games for this Halloween. These games are great, really great, and even though they're not new, you'd be really sorry if you missed them. Dying Light the Following is an expansion to the terrifying zombie game Dying Light, where you play the story of Kyle Crane. Dropped in the city of Haran, Kyle goes undercover to discover secrets of the survivors and viral info. This game is all about survival via crafting, lock picking, scavenging, upgrading weapons, and honing your parkour skills to vault off a of zombie's heads or leap from roof to roof. This game will keep you intrigued for hours while you play solo or multiplayer online. If watching Alien wasn't scary enough, Alien Isolation will drain your blood. Alien Isolation is a game where survival is key. You play as Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda, on a quest to find information about her mother's disappearance. The goal? To survive a nearly impossible scenario with one of the most terrifying beasts in sci-fi history hunting you down. Alien will not only keep you on the edge of your seat, but also leave you gasping for air. Last up is Doom. You play the only Doom Marine activated solely to kill the demons attacking the research facility on Mars. Doom is the fourth installment of this popular series featuring single player and multiplayer modes as well as snap map stage design which can be easily shared online with other Doom players. Doom is not only scary and challenging but is also definitely out of this world. That's it for this week. Next week, we're going to explore some indie, mobile, and tablet games that'll help you stay sane this holiday season. See you then. Why don't we lighten things up a bit and go to Joe from Hollywood Diecast. Welcome to Hollywood Car Minute. I'm Joe Johnson, and I am joined by Mel Guthrie. 
And do we have a treat for you. Behind us is a replica of one of the coolest, most iconic cars in television history, the Munsters coach from the classic TV series, The Munsters. Mel, what can you tell me about this awesome ride behind you? It doesn't have any Model T's in it like the original was constructed of three Model T's cobbled together, which Patrick has autographed it for me, so that's cool. So every part of this was, was hand fabricated, basically? Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. Do you take this one out and drive it? I, this looks like a museum piece. I have put more miles on this than a lot of these cars. Really? Wow. <laughs> to me, the Monkey Mobile, the Batmobile, and the Munsters coach are the three that... Uh... The holy trinity of TV cars. <laughs> Again, this is one of my all-time favorite TV cars, the Munsters coach. Mel, thanks so much for showing it to me. And thank you for watching Hollywood Car Minute. We'll see you next time. Wow, now that is the perfect ride for Halloween. Well, we're coming up on our last commercial break, but stay tuned. We've got one last break, so make sure to come back because Richie is looking at some of the year's best horror movies, and special guest Mark Myers will show us some new toys based on classic movie monsters. Welcome to Able Ideas. Where ideas come to life. Come on in. Here at Able Ideas in Detroit, we bring ideas to life. Whether it's a logo, a design, or a full-blown graphic novel, we have an experienced staff of artists, writers, models, and photographers ready to make your dream a reality. So if you're ready to see your vision brought to life, go to ableideas.com. know that Lawrence Technological University ranks fifth among U.S. colleges for boosting graduates' earning power? RSVP now for our Blue and White Tour on November 18th so you can meet students and faculty while exploring our 100 undergraduate, master's, and doctoral programs. At Lawrence Tech, everything is possible, and possible is everything. Welcome back for our home stretch. And as everyone knows, there is every conceivable type of collectible out there, and horror is no different. So we asked our good friend Mark Myers, who's a horror movie buff, to show us some of the new ones out on the market. Hey everyone, this is Mark, and today we're gonna take a peek at some new awesome collectible horror action figures, put out by NECA. For those of you who are unfamiliar with these folks, they are one of the largest manufacturers of licensed merchandise. With the recent rebirth, of the Evil Dead saga, we have here the Evil Dead 2 Ultimate Ash action figure. From the 1987 movie starring Bruce Campbell, this kick-ass seven inch scale figure has 25 points of articulation and comes with plenty of demon stomping accessories, like two interchangeable heads, two right forearms, his girlfriend's head, possessed hand, tape recorder, axe, Necronomicon, that's the Book of the Dead, and a shotgun. All in all, this is one groovy collectible. Next we have the three Freddy Krueger figures from the Nightmare on Elm Street line, starting with the Dream Warriors Ultimate Part 3 Freddy. This seven inch finely crafted sculpted figure is loaded with enough accessories to haunt a collector's dreams for days. If that made you queasy, then maybe you need to see a doctor, like this surgeon figure from Nightmare on Elm Street 4. This eight inch tall replica is dressed in tailored fabric clothing, just like the retro action figures from the 1970s. And last but not least is the new Nightmare Freddy from the movie where he haunts the dreams of the actors from the original movie. This version of Freddy took the character in a more menacing direction, and with two interchangeable heads, this figure captures it perfectly. You can find these gruesome collectibles at your local comic book and toy store. Until then, I'll see you soon. Oh, Jill. Pretty creepy, but cool stuff. And now, bringing up the rear as usual, is Richie with our home video segment. Ah! It's me, 
Hey, Richie. The last segment, of course, again. And this week, I'm bringing you the 2016 best horror movies that are currently available on Blu-ray and in streaming. Hey, <laughs> I look kind of like the, the Swedish chef, you know? Up first is The Witch, a historical supernatural horror film about a 17th century New England family who turns on each other when the daughter is accused of being a witch. The extreme realism helps make this one of the creepiest movies in a long time. Oh God, my Lord, I now begin. Oh, help me and don't leave my sin. For I repent and thou shalt be. From evil I will turn to thee. None ever shall destroy my faith. For I repent and thou shalt be. Oh God, my Lord, I now begin. Oh, help me and don't leave my sin. For I repent and thou shalt be. From evil I will turn to thee. Next, we have the semi-sequel 10 Cloverfield Lane that takes place in the world of Cloverfield, although it's not directly connected to the story or the characters of the first movie. This has shades of sci-fi, but is really a psychological thriller that will leave you guessing on the edge of your seat. No! No! No, no! No! Don't open that door! They're going to get all the kills! Currently, at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, Hush is a critically acclaimed home invasion movie about a young deaf woman who tries to stay alive in this cat and mouse thriller. Do yourself a favor and check out this little gem of a movie. And the title of the scariest movie of the year goes to The Conjuring 2, which is the sequel to the 2013 movie. This time, Ed and Lorraine Warren head to England to help the young girl who was possessed. This could have easily been another by-the-numbers cash grab. This sequel, however, might be even better than the original. Who's that? The family's just a pawn. Something inhuman wants to kill you. If we keep doing this... You're going to die. Those were some scary movies. Yes, yes they were, they're very scary. I haven't been able to sleep all week since I watched them earlier this week. Boy, that was stupid. I haven't showered, haven't done anything. I'll tell you what, I am sick of these horror movies. I, I don't like them. Let's have Brad do it next time. I don't care. I need a vacation. Thanks, Richie. What better way to cap off our Halloween episode than with some scary movie recommendations? Yep, and once again, we want to say thank you to Greenfield Village for hosting us and our sponsors, Northwestern Tech. Happy Halloween, everybody. Don't eat too much candy. I don't like candy, but I am very, very thirsty. All right, I know I said I wasn't going to tell you. But did you see the way that bat hit Glenn in the head? I mean, his eyeball was like, Ugh. and then Abraham's brain was like all over the floor, and it was, it was just beautiful. He was laughing, and it was, oh, no spoilers, sorry, but that's all I can do. Cute from Comments Being Sci-Fi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.